I really love this next episode. It was filmed during our encouragement series and it features my friend Karen Winling. And we're talking about encouraging your children. We got a lot of great feedback on this episode. It was so helpful and so enlightening. And Karen, this is what she does. She is all about the children and she knows what that looks like and what that means. So I pray that you are moved and edified by it. This is Real Life with Deb Waterbury, a real show for real people with real issues. And now, here's your host, Dr. Deb Waterbury. Hi there. Welcome to this episode of Real Life with Deb Waterbury. I'm here with Karen Winling. Hey. We are continuing on in our encouragement series. And so you would have known the last show. Last week, we were with Mike Hadabaugh from the Encouragement Lab, and we learned a whole lot about what encouragement is and how all of us can do that and, mm -hmm. and that it is not necessarily something that just some people have, mm -hmm. that literally we all can. And mm -hmm. even if you don't think you can, Mike talked to us about how you can learn to do that. Mm -hmm. So that was a great show. We want to continue on in our encouragement series. We, you know, and I was asking Karen right before we started shooting, you know, I, I wanted her to take the lead here being the children's minister. Um, mm -hmm. And that's not my, that's not my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I do, I did think this was really important to have one whole show about yeah because encouraging your children is and you know we've done that we did the the whole series on motherhood right because it is the most important mm -hmm. job that you will ever have mm -hmm. as a mother mm -hmm. is to raise your children right and a good deal of that raising your children we often forget is is in encouraging them mm -hmm. and how important it is to encourage your children mm -hmm. you know we will I, I know so many people that will they'll encourage other people Mm -hmm. You know, they'll go to church and encourage the snot out of everybody. Yeah, have a gift for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the gift of encouragement. But when they get home, uh, yeah. they, they're so interested in, in, the, in the aspect of correction mm -hmm. and instruction that they often forget that encouragement is so very important in that. Well, encouragement is woven into correction and instruction. Yes. You can't really correct without encouraging Absolutely. them to do it better or to do it right or to figure it out. Right, You know, right. Or you can't encourage them... Um, to be kind or to share their toys without encouraging them how to do that. Right, right. Yeah. And then encouraging good things about uh -huh. them too right. because if they feel that you are continually just telling them they're doing things wrong right. or what to do next and you've never given them encouragement about mm -hmm. who they are, mm -hmm. then what you have is a child with very low self-esteem right. and that becomes a, a, an adult with low self-esteem mm -hmm. and we, that can cause all kinds of yeah. problems. Yeah. Don't play with that. Don't touch that. No, I said no. You mm -hmm. know, all mm -hmm. that's, we, we do a lot of that kind oh, of stuff yes. basically to keep them safe 90% of the time. Right, but, right. But it's better if you can encourage them on how to do it right, that's you know, right. or how do you think you can do that, Johnny? Right, it's not right. working that way. What do you think is going wrong? And, right. And so that they can figure it out. Too many times, like we talked about in an episode earlier, helicopter parents, parents want to come in and fix it. They want to just do it for them because it's easier. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. let me tie your shoes because I'm in a hurry and I'm just going to tie your shoes because we got to get out the door. Right. Let me pick out your clothes and get you dressed because I'm in a hurry in the morning. So we're going to, you know, they do everything for them right, where right. we have to take a step back and encourage them to be their own little yes, person. Right. That's Even if it's choosing their clothes the day before, you right. know, but let them choose them. Yes. Let them pick them, you know, pick them out. Let them put them on. Let mm -hmm. them take the time to tie their shoes and really wait, you know, and, so, and, and I'm not saying every time. Sometimes it's going to be where you can't. Right. But right. that's just in the day to day stuff. But encouraging them to be their own person. Yes. I think a lot of times parents want their kids to be them. <laughs> or to be who they want them yes. to be. Like, I never was a dancer, so I want you to be a dancer. Or I never was a singer, so I would love... I, my dream was to always be a singer. Right. So I want you to be a singer, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like these kids are growing up doing stuff they don't even love. That's it's right. not even their gift. Very it's good. not even what God has called them to do. Yes. But yet we're forcing them, and we're wondering why they're frustrated, yes. and they don't want to go, and they're throwing tantrums, and... And then end up with, as teenagers who yeah. don't like you anymore. Are depressed. Yes. Have to be on antidepressants. That's right. You know, all this crazy. And, it, and it, I mean, it's hard to take it to that level because we're not encouragers that our kids are going to end up depressed. And you know no, what I mean? Like, but, ah. it, but, that, <laughs> but that is a natural. We have to look at the fact that, again, as we've talked about in the mm -hmm. motherhood series, this is an important thing. Yeah. The way you mother your children 
mm-hmm. is not about how they turn out necessarily. Mm-hmm. It's about how they turn out for the kingdom. Right. And if you are not encouraging them to be better, mm-hmm. if you're not encouraging them on, and then being an encouragement to them mm-hmm. to, you know, go for, you know, encouraging them on, telling yes. them what a good job they're doing right. when they do the good things. Right. Don't always be about telling them when they're wrong. Right. Um, if you don't do those things, then what you have is, a, is, a, is a, an adult, a young adult, or eventually an adult who is so stifled in that, that they're just broken. Right. And then what good is that in the kingdom? Yeah. Um, so it, it really, this is such an important role. And we often forget that encouraging them is, is such a big part of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, there's a couple of scriptures that I want to read. And then I want to talk a little bit with Karen in particular about how we can be an encouragement to our children in an appropriate way. So there's a couple of, of scriptures, and these are really scriptures about encouragement, and, and I think that we need to be careful to, that we know to apply these to our children. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first one is in Colossians 3.13. Mm-hmm. You must make allowance for each other's faults and forgive the one who offends mm-hmm. you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive one another. So I'm going to stop right there <laughs> um, before we move into the other ones. What does forgiveness have to do with your children? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that might be the first question you ask. Mm-hmm. Why is she reading something about forgiving your children or mm-hmm. forgiving when you're talking about encouraging your children? It goes both ways. You have to teach them to to ask for forgiveness mm-hmm. when they do something wrong. Yes. I'm sorry is not in the Bible. No. It's not in the Bible anywhere. Mm-hmm. They, they, you have to be taught to repent, mm-hmm. to turn from that yes. and ask for forgiveness. Yes. And then you're restored, you know, but the same, it's twofold because then like if you make a mistake, it's really imperative that you repent to your child. Yes. I shouldn't have yelled at you. Mommy yes. was frustrated. Mommy, and, and really you're given an excuse for why you yelled. Mommy was frustrated. Mommy was in a hurry. Mommy was whatever. That's really an excuse. There's really no excuse. No. But it's, but at least you're explaining it. At least it. you're explaining it to them. They're mm-hmm. understanding, you know, and I should have never yelled at you like that. I should have never handled that way, you know, handled it that way. Can you forgive mommy? Yes. You know, that is so They important. would be like, yes, mommy, I yes. can forgive you. And then you hug and you're like, okay, thank you so much. I mm-hmm. appreciate that, you know. And think about the people mm-hmm. that you, and I, we can all think about somebody right now mm-hmm. as an adult. I know I can. I'm sure y'all can too. The person that you just get so irritated with because they never say they're wrong. Mm-hmm. They'll never admit wrong. Mm-hmm. They'll never ask for forgiveness. They will, mm-hmm. because you're always the one that's wrong. Mm-hmm. That is what you will be encouraging your children to become yeah. unless you teach them the art of forgiveness. Right. And understanding right. that you as a parent are not 100% right all the time. Right. And you are going to do things wrong. And there's nothing wrong with going to your parents in, hu- I mean, your children in humility mm-hmm. and, and admitting I was wrong. That's so right. Exactly what you said. Because it is a level of humbleness. Yes. Because if you, if you can never ask for forgiveness, you're prideful. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it's teaching them how to humble themselves. Yes. I was wrong. That's right. Everything you're mm-hmm. doing is, mm-hmm. is to model mm-hmm godly behavior. Right. And if you don't model that, mm-hmm. then they're not going to know it. Mm-hmm. We talked about this in the motherhood series. Your children are by nature children of wrath. Right. They are by nature fallen and sinful. So mm-hmm. if we don't model godly behavior, mm-hmm. they're not going to know it. You're going to teach them how to forgive other little kids on the playground. Yes. You're going to teach them how to, when they make a mistake, say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Can you forgive me to other little kids on the playground, to other relationships, all other relationships that will be in their life? Absolutely. It is such such an important aspect. Mm -hmm. And then one other part of forgiveness that I don't want to get away from, um, because I've dealt with this with some mothers and Karen and I were speaking about this earlier. It is important that you recognize that when your children, no matter how young they are, have done something wrong, that you in your heart forgive them for that. Mm. Because we will, without knowing it, carry that with us. And so you will not be cognizant of it because we love our children. And so you're not cognizant of the fact that you you have a resentment for this child who did this thing that you considered terrible and you know you've corrected them, you've punished mm-hmm. them if that was necessary. They've said you've told them sorry, whatever. But have you forgiven them? Are you still treating your children as if that sin that they committed against you, or mm-hmm. committed against someone else, is not forgiven? Mm-hmm. And this is something that you know because we we'll think of that I think with other people, but we sometimes forget it. it will also affect the way we parent. Right. So you have to forgive your children. Mm-hmm. You don't have to tell them. You, you need to, you need to ask mommy for forgiveness. That's wrong. Mm-hmm. What I'm talking about is in your heart. Remember, forgiveness mm-hmm. is all about you. 
-hmm. You you know, uh, uh, when you need to forgive someone, they don't they don't have to ask for it. You still need to do it, mm -hmm. and you it will affect how you parent them. So there's so many aspects of forgiveness. I think that's no matter how old they get. Are. Yes. Because as they get older in their teen years, they're going to do things that are really going to hurt oh, you. Yes. And oh, don't and, you know it? Yeah. Many of you know that right now. Um, as <laughs> and even in with, young adulthood, you yes. know, like that kind of stuff. But and it's okay to go back and say, you know, can we visit that? Can we talk about that? Mm -hmm. That really hurt me when this happened, yes. and I want to forgive you. I want to move through that, but I need you to know how that affected me. Yes. And let me know if I'm way off base with that. Mm -hmm. and, what, and what you're teaching them mm -hmm. there is the art of communication yeah. and how not to stifle your problems right. or stifle your hurts. Put it under the rug. This, but mm -hmm. speak about them. There's so yeah. many aspects of this that are good, that, that shows good mm -hmm. parenting and will then model godly behavior. So good. Another scripture that I looked at was Romans 14, 19. So then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Mm. I think that should be the motto of every parent, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, you, that you are teaching them mutual up, upholding, upbuilding one another and peace. Mm -hmm. You cannot, you can't encourage, teach encouragement without actually having to foster that as well. Right. And that's the point of encouraging them, right. encouraging them to be their own person, encouraging them to forgive, yep. encouraging them to be kind. Yeah. When you're doing that, you are following Romans 14, 19. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it should be what we all do anyway, but your kids do not know it naturally. They're no. just not going to do it. No. There can be an, an uh, imbalance in that too. Yes. Like I know a lot of parents, not a lot of parents, but I've known parents who encourage their kids to a level of actually pride. Yeah. You're so much better than everybody else on oh. that stage. Mm -hmm. You really mm -hmm. stood out better than everyone else on that stage. You right. just, you know, like you, you, it, you have to be careful to not encourage them in a way where it's out of balance, yes. where it makes them feel better than everyone else. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's no matter good. what it is that they're uh, yes. competing in Could or not agree more, you know, because it, that, you, they lack humility. There. Right. Exactly. There's a, there's this lacking mm -hmm. of, of understanding mm -hmm. that there is, you know, somebody who did do better than you. There's right. always going to be someone who right. performed better and than that's got to be okay that has to you be did okay. your best yes because again yeah. what you end up with is a child who's like you know stressed out because they're they got to be perfect all the time exactly because mama told me i was better than everybody else no, so, so i have to be better than everybody else all the time right um, and you get this perfectionist so, OCD yeah. child who yep. just can't stand Anxiety. it if they fail. Yep, exactly. And you see those. Oh my goodness! You see when they fail and they just have a total meltdown. meltdown. Yeah. I, I messed this up yeah. totally with my youngest. It's taken mm -hmm. me forever. He's thirty now, but mm -hmm. when he was young, I remember, I, I, you know, I was so into encouraging them mm -hmm. that I, I overdid it. Mm -hmm. And what he in particular felt he had to be perfect all the time. Right. And I remember he was like eight, and we were coming home from the eye doctor. And his vision wasn't perfect. It was like 2030. <laughs> and I didn't think anything about it. And all of a sudden, I look in the back seat, and he's just crying his head off on the way home from the eye doctor. And I said, Miles, why are you crying? He said, because I failed my eye test. And, and I, I remember thinking, what have I done to this child? Yeah. And it wasn't that I ever said, you've got to be perfect. But I told him he was perfect yeah. all the time. I kept yeah. saying, you're so wonderful. You did this right. Yeah. You did that right. You're such a smart kid. Yeah. You know, whatever. Those are good things to say in, in moderation. Yeah. But you can create a child who thinks I'm only loved. I'm only accepted if I'm perfect, perfect. if I'm better yep. than everybody else. Yep. So that is really good, yep. Karen. You have to, again, and you said this word a bunch during our motherhood series, there has to be balance. Mm -hmm when you're encouraging your mm -hmm. children. Um, mm -hmm. You want to, you don't want to not encourage them, but you can't over-encourage them. Exactly. It's, um, and you know you're gonna mess up. Yeah. Because again, as I'm talking, yeah. I'm thinking, man, if I was a parent, especially if I didn't have kids yet, I'd be thinking, forget it, I ain't having any, because this seems just too hard. It's difficult. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but, That's why you have to go to some of those parenting classes, yes, like Love and Logic yes. and that kind of yes. stuff, you know, because there's no rule book, really, besides the Bible, which is the best, but yes. you have to have those things that will help you walk it out. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and godly women who have mm -hmm. done it. Yes. It is so important. You know, I have, there's so many small groups, and I, this is one of my biggest pet peeves with small groups is you have a young mother's small group and the only persons in it are young mothers. Mm -hmm. And they don't have, they're not, they're, they're, all they're doing is bouncing the same problems off of one another like a <laughs> ping pong. And they're just, you know. There's no wisdom there's no in wisdom. how to handle it. Uh -huh. So, you know, if you're an older woman, a mother who has been through this and has made the mistakes, has done the things right and wrong, yeah. be willing mm -hmm. to talk to younger mothers. Mm -hmm. Be willing to give your, your advice. And then if you're a younger mother, seek out 
a godly yes. woman. This is biblical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Bible very clearly yeah. says that the older women are to teach the younger women. Yes. And this is in parenting. This is mm -hmm. one of the ways that you do this. You know, there's nothing wrong with talking to your peers when you're sharing a problem with your children. But if you want to help solve the problem, you don't need to do it with your peers. Yeah. You need to do it with someone who's been through this yeah, before. And mm -hmm. we have a tendency not to do that. And yeah. I'm, I've met so many older women who won't do it and so many younger women who won't ask for it. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is so necessary. Mm -hmm. It is a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. Raising your kids is hard. I think it, like someone who ministers to children and to parents, one of my favorite things to do is to seek out parents and to find the good in their kids, yes. you know, especially yes. in little Johnny, who's just like a handful every single week, yes. because that parent knows that you're going to be coming up to when they see you coming, that you're going to, they feel it's going to be negative, Yes. you know? Mm -hmm. So as many times as there's been negative, I intentionally make it positive. Very good. Johnny was awesome today. Hey, Johnny, tell your mom what you learned today. You know, like I make it very intentional and That's then very good. intentional to tell mom you're doing great mom that's good you know and really and, and when parents that when you see parents doing really good with their kids man they need to hear that yes you are an amazing dad i mm -hmm. watch you with your kids yes very good you are you are imparting things into them you don't you know are as valuable as they are very you know good. to be an encourager to those young parents that's so good yeah. karen that's why you do what you do <laughs> um, it's, it's, it, it, but it is true it's, mm -hmm. it's encouragement is just so important mm -hmm. across the board we all want to hear it we do of course yeah. we do because we're our mm -hmm. own biggest enemies mm -hmm. and our own biggest critics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know I, I look back on the way I, I just told her earlier, the fact that my children are not, my men are not in therapy is an mm -hmm. amazing thing because I messed so many things up. Mm -hmm. But what I have learned to do and what mm -hmm. I do now, even as I remember when my oldest was going off to boot camp, he was like 23, going to boot camp in the army. And I took him out to lunch and spent most of the lunch apologizing for the things I had done wrong mm -hmm. um, as a mother. And I've done mm -hmm. so many things wrong. Mm -hmm and apologizing to him because I needed him to forgive me, but I also needed him to understand that I see where I was wrong. Right. And then even for my 23-year-old, modeling at that moment what appropriate humility in the response to one's actions looks mm -hmm. like. You know, you never stop being a parent. Right. It doesn't matter how old they are. Right. I mean, now they're 30 and 33, and I'm yeah. still parenting them. Yeah. You're always going to be Just a on a different level. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But it is so important that we model these mm -hmm. kinds of things and encouraging them in I think, a balance. I think this totally, a whole, there's a whole other way of encouragement, too. Like, you can do encouragement in a bad way, too, where you, like, you should be able to encourage your kids on other things, on their character, mm. not on their looks, mm. oh, not yes. on how pretty you are, right. not on how, oh, yes. you know, because that's, that's a whole other like bag all of your looks. It yeah. has to be on character. Yes. Very good. Karen. And, and bringing out all those character aspects <laughs> yes. of who that child is. Oh my goodness. That is such a good point mm -hmm. because we do live in a society mm -hmm. right now that where is outward this driven. is all yeah. that matters. Yeah. And we, you know, our hearts are right. Mm -hmm. We want to encourage our little girls and our little boys, let them know that they're beautiful and that they're pretty mm -hmm. and they're handsome. Right. And there's nothing wrong with saying whether they get dressed up or whatever. Yeah. Oh, she's so pretty. You're handsome. But yeah. yes, mm -hmm. but if that's where you're focusing your encouragement, you're creating a monster. Yes. And you're love, also love, joy, creating... peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, yes. faithfulness, self-control. I love how you were very much so controlling yourself right there. Mm. I know you wanted to grab that toy from little Johnny, but you held back, and yes. I'm so proud of you very doing good. that. You yes. shared. You know, I love how you were kind. I love how you brought joy. I love how you. All of those things. Yes, yes. Fruits of the Spirit, start there if yes. you don't know where to encourage your right. child in their character. Right, right. Yeah. That's very good, Karen. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you brought that point up. Encouraging your children is of the utmost importance mm -hmm. because their value, not in self, but in their position in the kingdom of God, is going to be established and rooted in where they hear it first from you. Mm. It, 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 they'll get, you know, as children of God, God will get it to them eventually if you don't do it. But what time is wasted mm -hmm. in their lives that they could be serving God in a healthy way because mm -hmm. from mommy and daddy, they right. got encouragement right. that led them in the kingdom of God. Right. So good. There, it be, begins mm -hmm. there. And again, you know, we said this so often, it's about your perspective. Why are you parenting? What are you doing? Are you parenting to create a little princess? Mm -hmm. Are you parenting so that they go to beauty pageants? Are you parenting so that they're a CEO of a company and hate everybody and step, step all over everyone that's just successful in the eyes of the world? Is that your goal of parenting? Because I would venture to guess that anybody who's watching this and is a believer, even those who aren't believers, I think mor your mor morals would be that you'd want them to be good people, right. kind people, right. people who are well balanced. Right. If that's what you... Influencers. Yes. If you mm -hmm. truly want mm -hmm. that, then the encouragement has to come, as you so very well put, from the fruits of the Spirit, their character.
-hmm. and then being sure that you mold them and encourage them toward good behavior, mm -hmm. even as you encourage their good behavior. So good. Yes, we love you very much. This is hard. I know how hard this is. We I, encourage you to be an encourager. Yes, yes, and understand Karen and I know how hard this is. She and I have racked up our own mistakes, yes. um, and we could fill 15 books with yes. those. And so will you eventually. You know, nobody does this perfectly. Right. But what you do is you recognize where you need to go better and, yeah. and always learn from those who have gone before you yeah. and are willing to share. Well, God bless you. We will continue to pray for you. This is a wonderful calling you have as yeah. a parent. And so just step into it in humility. God will lead you. Amen. We love you. Thank you for joining me today on this episode of Real Life with Deb Waterbury. I hope it's been a blessing to you as much as it was to me. You know, if you want any of my books or information on articles or any of my speaking engagements, you can go to my website at debwaterbury.com. God bless you.